How's it going, everybody? Captain Solomon here, and it's time for me to make my WrestleMania 34 predictions. I'm excited about this match card, even if it's going to be another six hours of wrestling. Uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, the start time is 5 p.m. Eastern on Sunday for the pay-per-view with, like, the kickoff stuff. Uh, I watch all the kickoff stuff anytime there's a pay-per-view or anything like that. I'm probably one of the few people that does. So, let's not waste any time. This is going to be a long video. There's nothing I can do about it. So let's jump into it. First match, we'll start with the pre-show stuff, is going to be the historic WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal. Uh, originally, you might have heard the name as Fabulous Moolah Battle Royal. Uh, if you don't know uh, about her tainted, shady kind of uh, storied, alleged past, I guess, there's not proof, but... There's a lot of shady stuff, it seems. Uh, there's a reason that people complain and wanted the name changed. Uh, rumor has it Chris Jericho had texted the idea of naming it the Sensational Invitational in honor of Sensational Sherry. And I think that would have been perfect. They really need to pick that up. Need to take that option into next year or something. Uh, anyway, uh, a lot of contestants uh, for the Battle Royals, obviously. Uh, there are ten announced names. Uh, if I remember correctly, for this one, uh, it'll be Bailey, Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, Naomi, Natalia, Sonya Deville, Mandy Rose, Ruby Riot, Sarah Logan, and Liv Morgan. Uh, that's the 10 there. Uh, also, this is obviously a chance for some NXT people to show up. Uh, so, you know, you might get Ember Moon showing up. Uh, I'm going to be picking winners only out of the names of people who have been announced, uh, which means there's a good chance I'm going to get one or possibly both Battle Royals wrong. Uh, I mean, even just the odds aren't in my favor of picking the winner in general. Uh, my choice for the women's is Becky Lynch. Uh, they never give her anything super meaningful. Like, there's a lot of, like, stories reported that Becky's kind of never been considered the one they wanted to be. The next one up, also, rumor has it Vince doesn't like her accent. Uh, screw Vince McMahon, I don't care. I love Becky Lynch. So, I'm picking Becky Lynch. Uh, Ember Moon could show up. I think what's going to happen is Sasha and Bailey are going to kind of like double elimination. Like, one will eliminate the other, causing the other to come back in the ring and eliminate, you know, what whoever's still standing. Um... I also think, you know, Naomi and Natalia, probably neither one of them will pick it up. Uh, you could see Carmella or someone get entered in this as well. I mean, just because she has the briefcase doesn't mean that she will, you know, not, you know, be in this match or that she will even cash in the briefcase. Um, I'm guessing the whole Absolution and Riot Squad, even though, like, neat, like one of them is, is kind of feels a little less important than the other at this point. Um, at least to me, uh, even though both kind of have been stale, I think they will also be dealing with each other a lot, and I think that'll be kind of an angle into the match as well. So yeah, I think just Becky Lynch kind of just gets a, like, you know, surprise dump over the last person. It'll probably come down to Bailey or, uh, like, Sasha, Becky, and somebody else or something like that, and Bailey will eliminate Sasha, or the other way around, because Sasha's probably going to get the heel turn. They'll never let me have my Bailey heel turn that I would love. Uh, anyway, yeah, pick and Becky Lynch. Uh, so next we have the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Uh, there's 14 names, I think. Um, it's over on Raw. You have Dash Wilder, Scott Dawson uh, claiming they're going to win it as a tag team. You've got Rhino and Heath Slater who pretended that they were going to win it as a tag team. And by that, I mean, they. I think Heath completely believes that. And Rhino already said, yeah, he's going to dump him over. Um, Goldust and Matt Hardy. Uh, and then over on, um, on SmackDown, you have Baron Corbin, Mojo Rawley, Ty Dillinger, Dolph Ziggler, Fandango, Tyler Breeze, Zack Ryder, and Primo. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is, I don't know why I care enough. <laughs> like, the, 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 the person who wins this never actually, like, it doesn't mean anything. It's never cashed in into anything. I'm going to pick, since I said I'm going to pick from people that are listed, I'm picking Matt Hardy to pick up the win. Uh, it's going to be wonderful. Uh, I'm picking him to win. Uh, maybe we'll see uh, the, the Woken Bray Wyatt show up, because like, that's rumored where he's going to become, uh, what's, what's going to happen with him since he's uh, lost the deletion match. 
I don't know. Uh, I'm picking Matt Hardy. Uh, my gut wants me to say the big cast will make his return here, but uh, maybe, maybe not. There's another place on the car that he could show up, uh, but we'll see what happens there. I'm not going to, again, make a pick for this match based on people that uh, haven't haven't been announced for it. Uh, and then the last show, on the or last match on the pre-show, rather, is the Cruiserweight title title match uh, after an amazing tournament. Really, like, I, I gotta admit that 205 Live has stepped up its game uh, since Triple H has officially, you know, taken the helm uh, and made it kind of his style of show. It's been a lot better, a lot more in-ring action, a lot more competitive. I, I've really enjoyed it. It's going to be Cedric Alexander versus Mustafa Ali. This could go either way. Ali has been cutting great promos. I'm going to say Cedric Alexander gets it. He, I mean, things just went wrong for him every other time he's tried to get it, whether Enzo was sick or then allegedly raped somebody and then got fired because of that. Uh, it's got to be Cedric's time. He's probably the more marketable of the two in the long run. I don't know. They're both great. I won't be upset either way. I'll still watch either way. Again, I'm one of the few people that probably watches that stuff. So, yeah, I'm going to go Cedric Alexander for this one, and that'll be that. Then we get to the main roster matches. Uh, we'll start with the Raw Tag Team Championship match, which consists of The Bar, Sheamus and Cesaro, going against Braun Strowman and a to-be-decided partner. I mean... As much as I'd love it to be brainstorming, because that was beautiful in my opinion, pretty sure they're not going to let that happen. So, we still got to figure out who his partner is. I'll say this before I predict who it's going to be. I think Braun's going to win no matter what. Uh, they want to give him gold, I feel. There was rumor that they wanted to put him in the Intercontinental title scene, but since they couldn't do that, like, they, they didn't do it initially because they, in case Roman or Brock couldn't make the title match for some reason, they were going to put Braun in because that makes the most sense. So they held him out kind of too long, and making it a fatal four-way for the Intercontinental title, I guess, was just too much. And I think somebody at WWE wants to put gold on Braun is what I'm getting at. Uh, there's a lot of rumors for who his cha uh, tag team partner could be. Uh, Big Show, uh, a lot of people are saying he is going to be returning. He just signed a multi-year deal. I guarantee he's going to be back. Don't know when. Could be Big Cass, as I said. He's coming back. And, you know, again, a big and big dynamic would be good. A lot of people kind of want to see the big, small dynamic. And a rumored Rey Mysterio, I don't think it's going to be him. Uh, it could be. Very well could be. They love, like, the shocking return moments. At WrestleManias, especially after the, especially after the success of the Hardy Boys, uh, so I don't think it's any of those. The two that it could be, <laughs> in my heart, uh, Elias. Which, who knows? It very well could be. I think it would be Elias would know to stay out of Braun's way, and in turn, Braun would just carry him to victory. But in the same dynamic. I hope it's James Ellsworth. That's my pick. James Ellsworth returns, is Braun Strowman's partner. God, please, let that happen. I would love it. I want a hot tag to, to James Ellsworth. I want James Ellsworth to, like, barely be alive the whole match. Like, I want Braun to just drag him out as, like, a dead carcass. <laughs> just toss him on the apron and go to his match. Like, that's kind of what I want. But, yeah, so either way, no matter what, I'm picking Braun Strowman. Next is the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. We have the Usos going against the New Day, as well as the Bludgeon Brothers Triple Threat Tag Team Match. Uh, I wanted to pick the Bludgeon Brothers, but I think the Usos, who it's been, like, it's taken nine years, or they've went nine years, maybe. One or the other, I apologize. Uh, without a WrestleMania main card, like, match, they haven't been featured, and that's a damn shame. So I think that it's going to be them retaining, uh, that you'll probably have the New Day take the pin because they can afford to, and that leaves the Bludgeon Brothers still open to look powerful because they're protected, they didn't get pinned. Uh, and, but I can also see it going the other way, where the Bludgeon Brothers do win, and then maybe, you know, uh, the um, Authors of Pain, since I said that I believe uh, some people are getting moved up, I feel Authors of Pain are coming up. 
and this could be the spot. I mean, I don't know. I, I couldn't say, but I, my, my pick, my official pick, is the Usos retaining the tag team titles. Uh, after that, we'll go to the United States title, Fatal 4-Way match, Randy Orton versus Jinder Mahal, R Rusev, oh man, I almost forgot that it's Rusev Day, huh, and also Bobby Roode's there, uh, I, I didn't even actually make a pick officially on my, on my, on my notes yet, this is the one I've been stuck on the most, because three of the four feel like they are literally, like, WWE guys, obviously Randy Orton has been, Bobby Roode is, like, the, the newer, I mean, granted, not in age, but the newer, um, guy that is seems to be a wwe guy he was in nxt at least uh which could be because of triple h uh jinder mahal clearly was when they gave him the title and they were trying to spearhead the whole idea of breaking into the indian market rusev's not i don't you know what it would be a shame if 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 he didn't win on rusev day i'm picking rusev Rusev is going to be your United States champion. I mean, he's so over. They'd be missing out on an opportunity. Not that they haven't done this before, but I'm picking Rusev. Uh, all right. Uh, after that, we're going to have a triple threat, which is going to be an amazing match. Uh, Intercontinental title on the line. The Miz defending his title against Finn Balor and Seth Rollins. Who? Um few different ways this could go um they've been preaching the whole miz having the uh longest uh culminative cumulative words uh, the longest total reign as intercontinental champion that's angle one they could go angle two finn balor could capture the title and effectively kind of start rebuilding him from his injury back whenever he was universal champion because he hasn't really had that time or Option three, the architect, Seth Rollins, could pick up the win. Uh, I think if they give him the title, they could have, uh, that'll mean the Miz, either way, if either of those two win, the Miz can go be a father for a bit. Uh, and I think, like, that's a reasonable thing, and I hope, hopefully that is the case. I mean, I, I won't be upset either way, I like the Miz. But, I mean, let him go be a dad for a little while and just bring him back in later, because uh, then you could use the storyline that he wants to recapture so he can have the longest total reign. Um, Seth Rollins is my personal pick. I think if Seth wins it, you leave room for a, a feud with him and Finn Balor, which, again, will bring people in. People will like that. And I think he can hold it until Dean Ambrose comes back. And once Dean Ambrose comes back, like, Dean's super happy for him and then, like, turns on him. Or maybe just shows up and attacks him. Uh, and that gives you the turn you wanted to have with the Shield reunion down the road, but couldn't because of injury. So, yeah, I'm picking Seth Rollins. I think Seth Rollins will get the win in that match. He will be your new Intercontinental Champion. Uh, then let's go on to the women. Uh, we'll start with the Raw Women's Championship, Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax. Not much to say here. I love Alexa Bliss. She's been one of the best women heels on Raw, period. There's no way Nia doesn't win here. Because if they went and bullied Nia for months just to have her lose, somebody, somebody needs to pay for that. Because Nia is a good talent. I don't think they got, I, don't, I didn't think they had a whole lot planned until recently. I now think that maybe they're going to give Nia the chance. At least that's what I'm hoping. That's what it seems. So I'm picking Nia Jax to win the title here. Then on to the SmackDown Women's Championship, which uh, could be the best women's mania match in all of history. We're going to have Charlotte Flair going against Asuka. And I, for a hot minute, almost picked Charlotte. Uh, I'm not going to. I am going to pick Asuka. Reason being... I'm going to buy into the rumors. I'm going to think people got it right, you know, maybe two years in a row. We're going to pick a full-year storyline here, kind of like we have with Roman in the past. This is, um, we're going to see Asuka win the title. I think Asuka will remain undefeated until that, let's see, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to admit it. Asuka's going to stay undefeated until next year's WrestleMania. Who will her challenger be? Well, stay tuned to find out the second half of that, because that'll be further in here. Uh, so next we have the tag, first of two tag team matches involving a McMahon. Uh, Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. 
if Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn cannot win this match, they are never allowed to return to SmackDown. They are fired from SmackDown. Daniel Bryan's back. It's beautiful. Even with Shane in this match, I'm, I'm not the hugest Shane fan anymore. He's not the greatest wrestler. Uh, I get I get why people pop for him. Though. I'm picking Daniel Bryan and Shane O'Mac. Um, there was part of me that thought maybe Shane would turn on Daniel here. But there's no way they don't give Daniel a pinfall victory with his return being at WrestleMania. There's no way. Uh, plus, it leaves the storyline way too open. We're about to have a superstar shakeup anyway. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are just both going to jump to Raw. I think it makes the most sense. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pick I'm gonna pick Daniel Bryan and, and Shane McMahon to, to pick up the victory here and send Kevin and Sami on their way. Uh, then after that, we've got Team Olympic of Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey making her wrestling debut. Uh, roll, roll. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, technically it's her first match. No, she's just beat up people in the ring, I guess. Uh, no, we're going to go with... Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey going against Triple H and Stephanie McMahon of The Authority. Um, yeah, I, there's no way Ronda Rousey doesn't win her first match in the WWE. There's no way a name this big would lose. Uh, I expect a double tap out moment in the middle of the ring where Kurt's got Triple H in the ankle lock and Ronda Rousey's probably almost literally physically like like Beowulf to Grendel just ripping off. Ripping off Stephanie McMahon's arm. Uh, double tap out moment in the center of the ring. Uh, you are going to see Ronda and Kurt Angle get the victory. Here's that second half of that Asuka uh, feud for next WrestleMania. Ronda Rousey is not going to lose a match after, you know, from WrestleMania on until she faces Asuka. And we will have a streak versus streak with Asuka staying on SmackDown, Ronda Rousey being on Raw. And we will end up having a streak versus streak match with the title on the line. And that will take place at WrestleMania 35. You heard it here first, people. I predicted it. I'm saying it right now. So that's my, my guess. Uh, but who knows? Who knows if that will actually happen. But that's what I hope happens. That's what I'm, I'm predicting it. Uh, and then three matches possibly left on the card. Uh, we will start with the one that could happen. Undertaker finally answering John Cena's uh, goading and goading and trying to you know push him. He finally answers, and Taker and Cena have a one-on-one -on -one match. Part of me thinks it's not actually going to happen. Part of me thinks that they're going to try to do what they did with The Rock, uh, and where they like basically boosted the next year's sales by telling you, hey, you know this is happening now. But I want taker to fight him at mania this year i really want it to happen uh because another the other side of the coin is that they didn't need to market this match people were going to tune in no matter what just because taker might show up uh so if the match happens i am picking the undertaker and i kind of hope he comes back as american badass taker i think not for any real reason if you watch the old stuff back like it's kind of cringy but at the same time i have a nostalgia spot for him so i'm gonna hope that he wins it or comes back as it, and then wins it. Uh, but they very well could be setting up for a match next year. Uh, I just kind of hope not. I'll be, I'll still be excited, but I'll be a little disappointed. Uh, then we'll go to the, oh, the dream match. We have the WWE Championship match, AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, if you haven't seen their clash in New Japan from like 2016, I believe it was, go watch it. Oh, great match. Great, great match. I won't spoil the, the result to that in case you haven't seen it. Um, beautiful match. Anyway, we're in the WWE now, as even AJ Styles in one of his little promos hinted at. This isn't the Tokyo now. It could go either way, and I will not be upset. However, for the sake of predictions, I am picking Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh... A lot of people that know me know I am a huge Shinsuke Nakamura fan, you know, uh, fan of anybody that kind of runs strong style in a sense, uh, those hard-hitting physical guys. I mean, it's what's why I like Samoa Joe as much as I do, too. Um, 
yeah, I'm picking Shinsuke Nakamura to pick up the win with a knee to face. Uh, it's going to be a phenomenal match. I cannot plug either of these two guys any more than I am in just talking about this right now. It's going to be an amazing match. Uh, it very well could be the match of WrestleMania weekend if it's given the proper amount of time. Uh, Shinsuke, I know his WWE work hasn't really proven it yet to some people, but I promise you he has um, he's an amazing worker. He's amazing in the ring. And it, I think if anybody can finally light that spark in him completely, it's AJ. And it's going to be at WrestleMania. And then, easily the most unpredictable match on the entire card... It's the Universal Championship match, Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. You've seen the song and dance. Roman Reigns is getting the belt. I'm okay with it. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I'm all right with it. It's taken three years to get here to a good, a good feeling title victory. I will not go as far as to say that the belt has been good. Because I don't feel I've really bought into it as much as some people have, uh, but I'm I'm okay with this. I'm I'm he's a good good enough wrestler now. He's gotten better on the microphone than whenever you know even like say you know within the last year we'll say just for you know clarity's sake. It, he's gotten better on the microphone. His ring skills have been improving, and he's at a really good point worker-wise. He sells moves amazingly. Like, he, you feel like he's legit taking punishment in the ring. Some guys don't sell that. Uh, Brock Lesnar, I think, you know, because some people would have to worry that, because Brock, if he's not interested in the match, will not give his 100%. I think he's going to give his 100% here. I think this is going to be a really good match. He's going to, you know, work with Roman to help put him over in a sense uh, i think that will happen and uh, i don't know i mean that's about all i could say about that match there's nothing huge to talk about there roman is going to pick it up uh we know it's been coming I, I mean what can i say i think afterward like there's rumor of a samoa joe feud between him and roman i'd like to see that i hope it happens like literally like the the raw after wrestlemania we see samoa joe come back who knows but yeah so that's it that's the 13 guaranteed and one possible match matches card for, for WrestleMania 34. Uh, you know, do you agree with my picks? Do you disagree? Uh, do you not care about any of these matches? You know what? Let me know all of that down in the comments below. Uh, if you like the video, hit like. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, you know what? Everyone else tells you to click that little bell. You can if you want. I mean, I don't, I'm not regular enough on content yet, but I'm going to get there. So, you know, as of now, hit subscribe, hit like, uh, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your dog if your dog is cool enough to watch videos with you. Anyway, I'm excited for WrestleMania if you can't tell, but I got some stuff to do today. So, <laughs> since I've wasted almost a half hour, I'm going to hop off here and edit this down. I've been Captain Solomon. You guys have been great. We'll see you guys later.